Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I have a really fun tutorial for you. A few years ago, my friend Vanessa Gertzen of Lella Boutique made a little project that she called the Goody Goody Bag Tutorial. And I loved her project, and I actually reached out to her and told her about a few changes that I wanted to make and asked her if it would be okay if I filmed a video. So she said yes, and we've got a, a little bit longer tutorial for you today because I go step by step. My project, you can see I need to just finish my binding, but uh, it's a little bit bigger, and I did a couple fun things differently inside as well, so let's get started with this tutorial. Okay, I am so excited to be able to share this tutorial with you. I first made my Goody Goody Binding Kit, I believe right around the time that Vanessa published it, Vanessa Gertzen of Lella Boutique. And I used some fig tree fabric and I, I followed her directions almost to the T. Uh, the only thing I did differently, Vanessa had this cute little strawberry shaped pouch for a scissor holder and I just I think I would I can't remember why I changed it but I just thought that maybe I just would do a little square pouch for my scissors I maybe I was thinking this strawberry this would be more versatile to have it square either way it's super cute if you want to do the little strawberry that's fine the but I'm going to change something else on the, this tutorial because I've wanted for a long time to remake it, first of all, in our fabrics, although these fig tree fabrics are super cute, but I've wanted to remake it and make my bag a little bit taller. I use this when I travel. I have binding clips in here. And I love that I can keep a couple spools of thread and I love that I can just pull the thread like that. Uh, I, I've had this at the beach, actually, worked on, working on English paper piecing. And, you know, I just felt like I would like it to be a little bit taller. I also have a tape measure in here because I feel like sometimes uh, that's essential. So, uh, but I just have wanted to make it a little bit bigger. I love having a little needle keeper right here. The other thing I wanted to do was use soft and stable. This was just made with batting that I quilted. So I've just been wanting to use soft and stable. I love the tie. So anyway, I reached out to Vanessa and I asked her, hey, would you mind if I filmed a tutorial for this? I am going to be making a couple changes. And she said, no problem, absolutely. She has a full tutorial also on her blog, which we will link to that's just step-by-step -step pictures. So you can actually go back to that too. She did a video tutorial when she was at Fat Quarter Shop where she just showed basically how to put this zipper in. So I'm gonna show you that as well. I use a different kind of zipper than Vanessa uses. So if you're using just the standard zipper, her tutorial might be a little bit you know, slightly different than mine. I'm going to use the By Annie zipper that I just love. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I've actually got all my pieces cut out and I used Alpha Bitties to label them. This is all according to Vanessa's uh, PDF of the, of the cutting instructions. So I've labeled them exactly like hers and I use the mini, the mini binding clips from Clover to attach the alpha bitties. So I've got everything labeled and I just want to show you a few things. I already know that I'm going to use a bias binding. I love this gingham. And so I've already got those strips cut. So I'm not, I didn't follow Vanessa's instructions for the binding because I was using bias. But I cut out a 20 inch square to cut my strips from. We have a video on making bias binding and I feel like I'm gonna have a little extra hair, but that's okay. So everything else is pretty much just like hers. 
I didn't have any felt for my needle holder, but I had this older needle book that I was not using, and so I cut the fabric out of it, and I'm gonna trim this down and use it for my needle holder. Uh, I've kind of got the fabrics kind of lined up how they're gonna be. This is, is uh, where they're gonna be. And then the one thing you're gonna notice is that since I'm making my case taller, my little pouch right here is going to be a little bit bigger. I just had three strips here and those are one and a half inch strips, but I will be able to use four for this because it's going to be a little bit taller. And I've already picked out my fabrics, cut my strips, and this is gonna be the lining for that pocket. So I'm using my, our Seashore Dry fabric and I actually had some soft and stable already quilted by my quilter and she just did a cross hatch. So I'm also not gonna be showing you that quilting step, but you can, you can see that on Vanessa's blog if you wanna do that yourself. I believe she just did half inch line, straight lines. This, I put, this is the only fabric that isn't from Seashore Drive. I just wanted to pop a green inside and pulled this from our Summer Sweet collection. Okay, so I've got everything ready to go and we are going to get started. Vanessa does her zipper first and so we will be doing the zipper first as well. And these are my pieces that will make the, the zipper pouch. And they're a little bit longer because I'm making mine taller. And let me just tell you, all of her pieces that are cut at seven inches tall, I did mine at eight and a half inches. So I just added an inch and a half and I'll have more details on that on the blog post so that you know exactly if you wanna make the larger size, uh, what you need to do for that. Okay, we're gonna start with the four G rectangles and your zipper. And you're gonna use two, this is a lined pocket. So we're gonna start out, and the zipper is supposed to be longer than your pockets, and that's fine. So you're going to, we're gonna start out, and we're going to put these, center the zipper on one of these and we're going to line up another rectangle right on top of it. You can use glue, like a glue stick to adhere it if you want to, but I just use a few little binding clips. And then we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and just sew a quarter of an inch seam. If you want, you can get right up as close to the zipper tape as, as you want. If you want a little bit of the zipper to show, you know, I feel like with this one, I wanted it to show because I wanted that pop of green. On this one, I might, I might put a little bit closer to the teeth because I'm just using a cream zipper. So I'm going to go over and sew that and I will come right back. Okay, so I've sewn this. I'll just kind of lay it back out for you. This is, this is what I last showed you. I sewed a quarter inch seam. I actually think I am gonna have some of the zipper show. It, it'll give a, a little break over here with all the aqua. I'm go going to go back and top stitch this so that this stays together and it's not moving. So I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna top stitch next to where I've folded it over. And when I do that, I'm also going to do the same thing I just did on the other side of the zipper. So you see, I'll be sewing a quarter inch seam here that will allow that to be flipped over and then I'll top stitch on both sides and come back. So I've used all four rectangles now. I've, I've done a little bit of top stitching right there and my pocket unit is ready to, we're, we've got one more step to, to, well, a couple more quick things and we'll be able to add it to our bag. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're, you're, you have to move this zipper into the middle. We're going to be trimming and we don't wanna cut, you don't wanna trim and leave your zipper tab out of your bag. So you have to make sure that you pull this to the middle before you do the next step. Okay, so I have it in the same kind of direction and layout as it is here. This side of the bag, we're going to press 
a quarter of an inch under because we need a finished edge over there. The rest of these edges will be enclosed in the binding so we don't have to worry about them. But this side, I'm going to press a quarter of an inch and turn that under. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to take a pair of scissors that I don't use for fabric and cut off these extra zipper tapes. And then I'm gonna just baste so that, the, so that it stays together right there. Okay, so making sure that the zipper is in the center of your pocket area, you can just take some paper scissors and cut off the extra zipper. It, it's so nice to have it a little bit longer than what you're working on and just being able to trim it. And so those can go in the garbage. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press this side under a quarter of an inch, as I mentioned, and then I am just going to do kind of a little eighth of an inch seam on these sides just to keep everything together. And I will go do that at the sewing machine and be right back. I actually, I sewed so that my zipper are staying together, but I didn't press this yet and I, I want to let you know why. Since I used the larger by any zipper, my piece is actually a little bit larger than it needs to be. If you're using a regular zipper, you won't have this issue, but basically uh, these fabrics are going to be the fabrics for over here, this other little pocket. And these two sections of, of the binding kit need to be about the same size because your, your kit will fold in thirds. So because of my zipper, I'm going to cut half an inch off of both sides to make it work with my bag. And then I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna cut half an inch off this side. Okay, and now you'll see that this is just right in line with this. We have our extra quarter of an inch over here that I need to go press under and I'll do that right now. Okay, so the hardest part is actually done. Most people worry about the zipper and we are done with that. This is just pressed under a quarter of an inch and we're just gonna set this aside now for later when we assemble our bag. And now we're going to work on the right side of the bag. We're gonna make this little pocket and it's actually three pieces. This K piece is the, the pocket binding and this I is the pocket and this is going to be what goes behind it. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to fold this in half, the pocket binding right sides together, and we are actually going to also, uh, we're going to make a little binding and we're gonna bind this top edge. So we're gonna sew it, I'm gonna press this, and then I'm going to sew it here and then we'll flip it over and you can either machine or hand stitch the binding down but we're just going to bind this little pocket it's actually reversible so uh, so that it's all finished on the inside um, so your cut piece is actually bigger you're going to fold it in half wrong sides together for your pocket and we're just gonna make a binding. And this is also purposely cut larger to make it easier so that after we bind it, we can trim it down. So I'm gonna go uh, press this and, and sew that first stitch of the binding and then come back and show you that. Okay, so uh, the pocket is pressed, right, wrong sides together. I pressed the little binding strip, also wrong sides together, and I did my quarter inch seam and then I pressed it up. I'm gonna fold it over so that it covers that seam. And I'm just gonna clip it. And at this point, you can bind it either by hand or machine, whatever your preferred method is. Uh, I never bind by machine, but I feel like I might go bind this by machine because the backside is not gonna show. It's the inside of your pocket. And so if you, if I just sew right next to the edge of the gray binding trim, it's going to catch 
the back of this. And so I'm gonna run over and I think I'm just gonna sew this by machine and then I will come back and show you that next step. Okay, back from the sewing machine. And I actually decided to stitch this in the ditch. And what stitching in the ditch means is just sewing right next to that folded seam. And you can see on the back, it caught the edge of the binding. So now my pocket binding is complete. I'm just going to trim this off evenly. Okay. So, and it, it just makes it a little easier to have those binding pieces a little bit longer. So now I've got my pocket and I'm going to align it with the B piece, which is our pocket background. It's kind of hidden by my hexagon package, but is this, so this is the pocket with the binding and this is the background piece. And we're just going to baste these two side edges together. So just a simple basting stitch, and then we'll set this aside, and we'll start working on the middle of our bag. So we'll have the left side done, we'll have the right side done, and now it's time to do the middle section. But first, I'll run over and baste those together. Actually, while I'm there, I'm going to sew my patchwork strips together too. So I've chosen four different fabrics and they're all one and a half inches by three and a half inches. So this part isn't in Vanessa's pattern. I will have it on my blog. And the pattern uh, or the pocket backing is three and a half by four and a half. So, but I'll, I'll run over there and I'll sew these together and press them and I'll base this and I'll come back and we'll, we'll make this pocket next. Okay, the sides are basted. So we actually have a little pocket there. Uh, this bottom will, will be caught in the binding seam, so it's okay that it has a hole in the bottom right now. Uh, and we'll set this aside. So we've, we can set the left and the right aside for now. We're gonna finish up our center section. And as I mentioned, we're gonna make the pocket first. So I sewed the strips together and I pressed all of the pieces down. And you're gonna put this right sides together. This is just gonna be the lining. And you'll want to sew just about a quarter of an inch all the way around and leave just an inch and a half for turning. We're gonna sew this together and turn it right side out to make our little pocket. Okay, so um, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to do the first steps for our thread holder. The thread holder is right here. It attaches with a little piece of Velcro at the bottom. These are R-fill spools and they just slide perfectly right on. Uh, so we will be finishing that edge, but the top edge of this won't need to be finished because it's also sewn into the binding. So I'm just gonna show you the first steps on that because I'm gonna go start doing that while I sew this. And that is basically, I'm going to turn in the top edge a quarter of an inch. Well, it's actually gonna be the bottom edge where the Velcro goes. And then I'm going to press it in half. And then once I have that press line, I'll press to the center and press to the center. And I'll come show you that so you can see it in uh, before I sew it all together so that you'll have a visual on that. Okay, let me show you what I've done. I've got my my pocket sewn together and it's lined. I turned it inside out. You can see I still have the opening down here at the bottom, but that is going to get closed up when we sew it to the piece. You can tell that I sewed this pocket all the way around the four edges. And so the opening at the bottom will get closed up then. So there's no need to close that up now. And I do think it'll be nice to have the pocket a little bit bigger since my case is going to be taller. My needle, holder is also going to be slightly larger than the measurements in Vanessa's pattern because I'll have that extra space up here. So, uh, so we'll set those aside. So we've got, so this, if you're making Vanessa's size, just cut it to the size in her pattern. Mine is going to be two and a half by three and a half, but I pinked the edges. Okay, so we can set this aside and this aside. 
Let me show you what I did with the Velcro. Uh, well, it's going to have Velcro on it with the thread holder. So at the top, at the bottom end where the Velcro is going to be attached, I folded that under. I pressed it in half and pressed it in half again. So I've got it to this position. Okay, now we're going to add the Velcro, which is just, you're going to need a quarter of an inch by a one inch piece to add at the bottom of this finished end. Remember the unfinished end will go at the top of the case and will be covered by the binding. So it doesn't matter that those are raw edges. Okay, and I've got some Velcro right here. And like I said, you just need a really small amount. I'm going to use my ruler and just cut a one inch piece. Now we're going to put the, the flat part will be sewn to our uh, fabric and the, the rough part is going to go on this unit. But first you'll want to measure, it's probably going to be about a quarter of an inch, exactly. So we're going to want to cut the Velcro, and mine, for some reason, these aren't lined up exactly. So I've got to line them up, and then I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch. This is the tiniest Velcro, but... Okay, and if you mess up, you've got more than half left over. Okay, so we're going to save the soft side. That will be sewn onto the fabric later. And we're going to put the rough side right down here at the end. And we're going to actually accomplish a couple steps in one right here. We're going to sew about an eighth of an inch from either side along. I'm going to do the open side first. So I'll be closing that and I'll also be attaching the Velcro. And then we'll go ahead and sew about an eighth of an inch away from the other side. And that will catch that ve Velcro on the other side and uh, just give us the nice finished look that we need. So I'll run over to the machine and do that. Okay, we're just about ready to put this all together. So we've got our pocket. And if you followed Vanessa's pattern and made the strawberry pocket, uh, you'll have that ready to go. We've got our thread holder or, or our needle holder and then we've got our Velcro is attached to our thread holder and we've got our extra piece of, of Velcro. And this piece C is the interior piece. We are actually going to take our finished pocket before we attach any of these things to it and we're going to sew it right sides together along that right edge. And then after we get that seam done, we're going to press the seam over towards this interior panel. So I'll go ahead and I'll take that off. I'm going to go sew this seam and press it. And then I'm going to come back and tell you exactly where you'll need to place all of these things to line them up properly on here. So once you've got everything together and we've added the pocket piece over here, we are now going to attach our zipper sec zipper pocket section before we add these things to the middle. So you're going to line this up with the right sides of that and make sure that your pressed edge that we pressed earlier is on this towards the center. Make sure that your zipper, I like to have my zipper go from top to bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to baste just about an eighth of an inch all the way around on these three sides. We don't need to sew this center side yet, but we do need to base these three sides so that we have this in place and we can use it as a guide in order to place these other parts of the binding kit. So I'll run and base those and come back and show you exactly where to place these. Okay. I'm actually back from the sewing machine. I've attached all of these pieces and I'm going to show you, let you know exactly where they go. So the, the thread holder, you are going to keep it three fourths of an inch away from the edge of the zipper pocket. Remember, we haven't sewn this down yet. 
and just baste it there so that it stays, making sure that the Velcro part is on the underside. This Velcro piece right here that we had left over, you're going to actually put it three fourths of the way of an inch up from the bottom and three fourths of the way over from the zipper pouch. So three fourths of an inch here and three fourths of an inch here. And Vanessa suggests using just a little bit of Elmer's glue to keep it in place while you sew it. I didn't, I just really watched it over there, uh, carried it over to my machine, checked my measurement, and I stitched around all four sides of that. You can actually see the stitching on the back. And this won't show because this is gonna be put face to face with the outer part of our, our case. You can see the other stitching here. So I turn it around the right way for you. So then you can see that that will line up and we'll be able to put our thread spools there. I sewed the pocket, I just basted uh, not even an eighth of an inch all the way around the edge. Backstitched here and here to make it more sturdy. And that did close up that opening at the bottom that I mentioned. And this also is three fourths of an inch away from the top and from here. And I feel like I kind of just like centered it in between the Velcro strip, the thread holder, and this side of the pocket. Okay, so we are finished with this part. We are now gonna make the ties. And the ties, well, and it's actually just one tie. You cut two pieces of fabric because we need the extra long length. So we're gonna sew these together. And this is actually going to be made exactly like we made our thread holder. So I'm gonna to go to the machine, I'm going to make the tie and then come right back. So now I've made the tie strap and as I mentioned, you make it exactly the same way that you make the strap for the thread spools, except that you do finish both ends. So I've made that and what you're gonna do now is you're going to mark the center of your outer piece and if you've done the straight line like quilting like I've done, it'll look like this. It, uh, mine has the cross hatch, as I mentioned. So I marked the exact center, and you're also gonna find the center of your piece, which actually, you have a seam line from sewing the two rectangles together to make the strap. So that one you don't really have to measure because you've got that seam line. And just line up those two parts and what you're going to do is you're just going to backstitch several times over so that you're attaching this to the outer section of your bag and you can see I've already done it here you can just see my little straight line where I just went back and forth back and forth back and forth several times to attach that so I'm going to go do that and then come back and we'll put this all together okay I've got that stitched you can see it really well from the wrong side and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to layer the outer bag and the inner bag right on top of each other they should be exactly the same size I'm going to attach that velcro so, so it stays kind of out of my way the next thing that we're going to do is you're going to want to baste all the way around before we add the binding it'll just help everything stay together and I just I like to use the the clips and just clip everything together and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around and then I'm actually while I'm over there as soon as I do that I'm going to add my binding which I've I have ready and I'll let you know I, I have a lot of extra binding here I know that I used a 20 inch square for the bias. If any of you are doing bias binding, I will, I feel like it might make at least two bags. So, uh, but, it, but there's no need to do binding, bias binding on this. There are no curved edges. I only did it because I wanted that gingham fabric on the bias just for the look. So feel free to use regular 
just straight of grain binding when you bind yours. So yeah, I will go over and I will base this and then I will do the machine sewing on my binding. And one thing you'll, you'll want to be sure to is when you're basting and doing the binding, you want to keep these out of the way. And so you can clip them together and just make sure that they're not going to get sewn into your piece. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I went over to the sewing machine and I actually did baste it together. I, I did my basting from this side so I could completely make sure that I wasn't catching this in. But then I realized there's, there's another step that we need to do before we bind it as well. So the bag it is divided into thirds. And remember, we never closed off this seam. So we're going to top, top stitch here and close that off. We're also going to sew a seam over here. And I thought about this earlier, and, and, and at first I thought, why don't we do this before we attach it to the, the outer cover? Because that, that, this line is going to show. But you kind of need that to, to help your bag fold more. If you really, really don't want that line, you could just do this stitching before you add the interior section to the outer cover. I feel like it just wouldn't have as much strength that way. And I think in retrospect, that's probably why Vanessa did straight line quilting on hers because she does have you try to make those thirds. In mine, it didn't really work out. She, she has you try to, to do it to where they end up right on top of one of the other stitches. Mine didn't work out and it didn't bother me. You're never really looking at those edges that much. But I do feel like you want to do it when it's all together because it does give it that, makes it to where it really folds easily into the thirds. Okay, I'm back and it's ready to go. I stitched those lines that I told you about. Mine ended up being five and a half inches in from either side. It closed off my zipper pocket, so that's all sealed off. And it's just an additional line of stitching over here to help your bag fold. And I just, I really do like how it folds. Let me just show you on the back too. The lines are really unobtrusive. They hardly show at all, so don't worry about that. And I even used white thread. I feel like I could have used a blue thread and maybe it would have shown even less. Uh, also for the binding, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down by hand. You can machine bind it the way you did the pocket. And in that case, you would stitch in the ditch on the outer sides and it would catch it inside. But I, I like hand binding, so I'm just going to go ahead and hand bind it. Uh, one thing I noticed too, I'm super happy because I'm going to use this for English paper piecing uh, too. So now my bag doesn't stick out of the top. I've got plenty of room. I can even put little hexagon uh, fabrics in here. It's just, so you can use it for a binding kit or just a small applique or English paper piecing kit. Either way is great. I'm also going to add a little tab. We actually filmed a video on how to make a little decorative fabric tab. To my zipper so I'll do that also as well and just one more thing for size comparison just just slightly larger it, it's actually the same exact size this way but just taller so I hope you'll have fun making this okay so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial I know it was a little bit longer but we did go step by step We'll have all of the links that you need in the description below if you want to make Vanessa's version or make the version with the adjustments that I made. We'll have information on both of those. And if you enjoyed this video, we hope you'll share it with a friend and hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.